Of course, it's Heritage Month and government has called on South Africans to use this period to promote nation building and forge greater social cohesion. I'm now joined by historian and cultural expert Petit Kamtuli, Professor Petit Kamtuli, and he takes a look at heritage in South Africa and how it's understood. Now, when it comes to heritage and especially Heritage Day, Professor, a lot of people, you know, they don't really pay the respect it's due. Heritage Day, especially some people call it Friday and all these things. So what would you say that we can do as South Africans to, to put more focus on this day and this month especially? And what's the importance of putting focus on this day and also Heritage Month? I think in a sense we have already you know, began when the Department of Arts and uh, you know, Culture extended uh, Africa Day to Africa Month. You know, since then, people in different communities are organizing, you know, themselves in order to remind themselves of who they are, remind themselves of their language, remind themselves of activities, remind themselves of uh, paying to those mountains as well as the rivers that are sacred, uh, you know, to, uh, I mean, to the people. But uh, nonetheless, the majority of the people who have been so westernized and so Christianized that uh, they turn their backs upon their own uh, uh, you know, heritage. That's why for them it becomes uh, the question of uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, bright day. Central for me you know, to this is to think of uh, language, because language defines who you are. You cannot build any, any nation building without language, without also uh, the, the cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible. Now, Professor, um, you touched there on, you know, losing our identity. Um, that's very important, and it's also very worrying, I would say, as South Africa, if we lose our identity. What do you think can be done? Um, do you think it's something that needs to be done at school level um, to teach kids more about South Africa, its history, its culture, um, and, every, and, you know, so many people have different backgrounds and, and, and heritage. So what do you think needs to be done in order for us to... Um, restore this very important part of who we are as South Africans. Japanese are taught in Japanese, the Germans are taught in German, the French are taught in French, the English in English, we are taught actually in English. Right at the beginning of uh, our own life, we are now situating our children outside our cultural norms, outside our own uh, uh, in, in heritage. I think it's very important that uh, what the Department of Basic Education has begun now saying we need to make up to school up in uh, their own languages. We can also turn the question of a uh, uh, you know, subject, uh, you know, like uh, I can't remember what it is, lifeline or, or lifetime, whatever else it is, uh, to get ordinary people from the villages in the townships to come and teach children uh, at basic uh, you know, level about their culture, tell them their own you know, stories. Then we are beginning to build the confidence and the defining clarity what our heritage should be, what our culture should be. And also, we had suggested actually before that when we had uh, under the President Tabombegi and the issue of the African Renaissance was uh, you know, there to refocus uh, to remember the dismembered people, to reinvigorate uh, you know, the people. One of the suggestions was made but was not practice was that at the university there has to be a compulsory course on African Renaissance that would we never graduate from the university uh, without uh, having you know that course. And also the issue of uh, the University of Wazulu Natal that had taken a, a, a decision that nobody graduates uh, in that university, uh, let's have taken the module in, uh, in the Isizul. It is all of the uh, you know, uh, bits and pieces that the schools can do, the university can do, communities uh, 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 you know, themselves can uh, uh, do. I think even religious organizations that are very African-centered can also you know, preach the gospel of uh, the African Renaissance, because that's now, what we're actually talking yes. about. Yes, very true. Now, you, you, you said there's something very important, you know, at universities, um, 
African languages, especially South African languages, need to be taught um, in schools as well. Um, and it's so important for you know graduates to, I think personally, to to be able to understand a South African language and not just English. You know, at least Afrikaans, Xhosa, or Zulu, whatever the case might be. Um, why do you think, though, that so it's, I mean, it's easy for us to talk about this and, and, and say these things, but why do you think universities have not implemented something like that yet? I mean, the, the, I mean, the question of the universities, that, you know, themselves are the most kind of colonized, uh, you know, the minds. The minds of the people that run the, uh, the universities themselves, they bought into the world, into Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard mentality, you know, turning their minds away. Coloniality is ruling, actually, you know, their, their, their mind. They need to decolonize uh, the, the thinking in the universities, the university councils. Uh, if the students, uh, you know, themselves need to be promoting the issue of what is really them, what is their own kind of an identity, and not on the photocopy identities that have been uh, imposed uh, upon them uh, willingly you know, by, uh, you know, by other people. So the universities themselves, uh, we made a big mistake when we were merging the universities. We made the universities all the same template that we did instead of uh, reimagining a new university, an African uh, uh, universities. In other words, our universities lack a lot of imagination uh, you, you know, up on them, and they wouldn't want any body that is fully aware of our culture and our ideas near them. They'll keep them as far away as possible and business as usual. Mm. Thank you so much. That was historian and cultural expert Pitika Ntuli.